Hi students, today we talked a little bit about how glucose in your bloodstream is regulated. In particular, we were discussing how the uh, GLUT4 receptor, which is a transmembrane domain containing protein found on both fat and skeletal muscle cells, is regulated by the hormone called insulin. In this picture, what I've drawn is a blood vessel. Okay, I know this isn't a great picture, but here's the blood vessel. And with increasing amounts of glucose in the bloodstream, that gets recognized by the pancreas. The pancreas, as shown here in a picture, is an, an organ that sits basically underneath your liver. And it has cells called the islets of Langerhans and the islets of Langerhans contain beta cells and it's the beta cells that recognize the increase in sugar brought to it by blood vessels that supply the pancreas and will begin secreting the insulin. Insulin that has been released into a host through the beta cells in the pancreas all right, the insulin will float around in the bloodstream and when it reaches cells that can actually bind it, it binds insulin by this protein here called the insulin receptor. All right. Now, it gets complicated after binding to the insulin receptor, but basically what happens is Binding of insulin to the insulin receptor causes a, we call this a cascade of activities. Think of this as dominoes, right? So here's your first domino, all right? And you have another domino set up right after it, and another domino set up right after it, and another domino. Once the first thing happens, right, we start the dominoes falling, the dominoes lead to a particular function, and that function is the upregulation of GLUT4 on the plasma membrane. So GLUT4, as shown here, is in a vesicle right, waiting for a signal to get to the plasma membrane, either on, okay, the sarcolemma is a, this is, we're talking about a, skeletal muscle cell, skeletal muscle, or it could be on an adipocyte, which is a fat cell. All right, so this signaling cascade that results due to the binding of insulin to the insulin receptor causes the translocation of GLUT4 in the microvesicle membrane to the plasma membrane. Notice on the right hand side, interestingly enough, the exact same response can occur due to contraction. So that means if you're doing any kind of activity, that leads to a domino effect, right? Through a molecule called AMP kinase. So AMP kinase leads to something, leads to something which results in GLUT4 translocation. So there's two ways to get GLUT4 to the plasma membrane, either by insulin, which is recognizing glucose in your bloodstream, or by doing some sort of skeletal muscle activity, leading, contraction, which would lead to the need to take up more glucose. I'd like you to notice in this image, okay, what we're seeing here is the comparison of GLUT1 and GLUT4. I don't know if you remember, but I told you that there are GLUT1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 5, right? So GLUT1, GLUT2, GLUT3, GLUT4, GLUT5. GLUT5 is actually wrong. It's a fructose transporter, so it doesn't even actually make sense. But GLUT1 is a glucose transporter. And that can be found on a lot of different cells, in particular brain cells have a lot of GLUT1. And if you look at the two receptors, what's different about them? Well, not much. 
So if we have GLUT1 and GLUT1 is on a lot of cells, whereas GLUT4 isn't, GLUT4 is regulated based on where it's placed, which cells, and that's only on fat and skeletal muscle cells. All right, skeletal muscle. Okay, how do we regulate the uptake of glucose? And, and the way that our body has figured out to do this is through the use of insulin. So these particular receptors, notice they have one, two, maybe you can't see that, maybe I'll just do it over here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. These are twelve pass transmembrane proteins. Now you might be asking a very good question. So, right, if this is N terminus and this is the C terminus, which side do the N and the C terminus face? Do they face the lumen of the vesicle that they're in? Do they face the cytoplasm? Regardless of whether they do, they face the same way for GLUT1 and GLUT4. So the main way that these are regulated is one is regulated by insulin and the other is not regulated by insulin at all. GLUT1 is on cells and it constitutively, which means it can always take up glucose if glucose is around. On this particular diagram, it actually tells you, it shows you the GLUT4, all right, and I'm going to circle the GLUT4, all right, this blue molecule is the GLUT4, and it's in a GLUT4 storage vesicle, GSV, and what happens is when you get the binding of insulin to the insulin receptor, it causes all of these molecules to be activated. All right, and activation of these all right, leads to the transport of this receptor to this transporter to the plasma membrane. All right, and you can see that both the N and the C terminus of the GLUT4 molecule are on the cytosolic side of the plasma membrane. All right, so this is the plasma membrane. And what this leads to is the uptake of glucose. So glucose will come into cells when that channel is placed on the plasma membrane, thereby lowering the amount of glucose in the blood. And that will ultimately lead to the internalization of the GLUT4 receptor. Right? It comes in, and it'll either get taken to where it's degraded, or it can be recycled and placed back into a GLUT4 storage vesicle until the next time insulin is introduced. All of this transport is regulated by RABs and SNARES. Right? So RAB regulates the transport, SNARES do the fusion, right? RABs and SNARES. And for those of you who are, are really thinking out there, you might ask, what's the coat? It's not at all clear what the coat is, if there is a coat. Remember, coats are required for vesicle budding and for the concentration of cargo. In this case, the cargo is already concentrated, and it's waiting there in a GLUT4 storage vesicle, waiting for insulin to do this signal so that we can get the receptor back to the plasma membrane. So what would, right, if I asked you a question, what would the protein look like as it's being synthesized? And this is before any signal peptidase, so no, no signal peptidase activity has occurred. Okay. If you draw right, our rectangular box and I say to you, how many signal sequences would there be, you should be able to answer that. As drawn here, right, if you look at the 
protein, as it sits in the plasma membrane, the N and the C terminus are in the cytosol. Okay, that tells you that there was no N terminal signal sequence. So in the box, you would merely need to demonstrate that you understand that each signal sequence. All right, so let's just draw in. One, two, three, four. How many do I need? If it's a 12 pass transmembrane, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so each of those is a signal sequence, which means it's a transmembrane domain. What if I asked you to label each piece of this protein and whether it's in the cytosol or in the lumen or extracellular. So let's say this is extracellular and this is cytosol. So in this case it would be cytosol, lumen, cytosol, lumen, cytosol, lumen, cytosol, lumen, cytosol, lumen, cytosol, lumen, cytosol. All right. And what would the hydrophobicity plot look like? A hydrophobicity plot Right, would show the protein and it would have a hydrophilic domain followed by a hydrophobic domain, hydrophilic, hydrophobic, hydrophilic, hydrophobic, hydrophilic, hydrophobic, etc. And you would need to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, let me make that a little smaller. Okay, can I make this a little smaller? I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Okay, now that it's a little smaller, I can finish this, right? Oop. Need to hit the marker again. So I need eleven, twelve. All right, that's twelve transmembrane domains. How many, how many hydrophilic domains? Where would you expect to see carbohydrates? What are carbohydrates? We're talking about N-linked and O-linked sugars. So if this is in the cytosol, this is a transmembrane domain. That means that this is outside the cell. This could be modified with sugars. Often you see branches like this on sugars. So this piece of the protein could be modified either through N-linked or O-linked glycosylation. I think that's going to be it for this little lecture, so I hope that helps you understand insulin, the trafficking of the receptor, and how that receptor gets to the membrane.